Hello friends, Kik is here and in today's episode you will witness Apple's collapse in China as well as the release date and price of Apple Vision Pro. Google, which wrote a constitution for robots. Sony showcasing the Afila electric car controlled by a PlayStation 5 joystick. Samsung, which introduced a transparent micro LED display and a monitor with a 3D screen. Johnny Ive and the founder of OpenAI, who are preparing something with artificial intelligence and the first US lunar automatic apparatus in 50 years, which suffered a fiasco. All this and much more right now. Let's Let's go. Today we start with bombastic information from the independent analytical global company Jefferies. In December 2023 and the first week of 2024, Apple was shaken by an incredible event. iPhone sales in the Celestial Empire fell by a whole 30%. This, friends, is the most significant decline in recent years. You're probably wondering how this could have happened. Let's figure it out. China is one of the most important markets for Apple, and this sales slump has had a negative impact not only on American giants, but also on the entire Chinese smartphone industry. Even with aggressive price cuts on various iPhone models, and even a 16% discount on the latest iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, the situation could not be leveled. Why did this happen? The answer is simple. Tough competition from local manufacturers, especially Huawei, plays its role. For example, Huawei was able to increase shipments by 20% last year, reaching more than 35 million sold devices. Their flagship Huawei Mate 60 lineup showed the most significant sales growth. All this led to Jeffrey's experts predicting a further decline in Apple sales in China, while Huawei, on the contrary, will continue to grow. Interestingly, in in 2024, Huawei plans to ship more than 64 million devices worldwide, which is twice as much as last year. It seems that after a long decline, the Chinese smartphone market is reviving, and companies like Huawei, Xiaomi, Lenovo, and others are preparing to pose even more serious competition to Apple. And that's not all the news from Cupertino. Apple has finally unveiled long-awaited details about its Vision Pro Mixed Reality headset. The device will go on sale on February 3rd, and pre-orders will start as early as January 19th. The cost will remain the same, $3,499 for a model with 256GB of built-in memory, and there may be options with more memory. In addition, optical lenses from Zeiss can be purchased for the headset for $99, and if you need prescription lenses, the price will rise to $149. The package will include solo knit band and dual loop bands straps, light seal cushions, a cover for the front of the device, a cloth for polishing screens, a battery, a charging cable, and a USB-C power adapter. Initially, sales will be available in the US, and then Vision Pro will appear in other world markets. And don't forget, friends, that Apple Vision Pro is not just a headset, it's a real masterpiece of technology, running on the Apple M2 processor and the auxiliary Apple R1 chip. It promises us incredible experiences of mixed reality. Meanwhile, in the world of technology, amazing changes are looming again, and our first stop is Google and their new Constitution for Robots. An impressive work created based on Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics, it serves as a kind of guide for robots. Google used its advanced technologies, such as AutoRT and models for visual and language analysis, to create a system that can not only understand the environment, but also adapt to different situations and make decisions according to safety-oriented cues. These cues include instructions for robots to avoid situations where people, animals, animals, sharp objects, or electrical appliances might be involved. Based on creative tasks, the LLM robot selects the appropriate task to perform, and this looks incredibly mind-blowing. Google has deployed 53 AutoRT robots and conducted over 77,000 tests, allowing them to act both remotely under human control and autonomously using artificial intelligence. These robots, equipped only with cameras, manipulators, and mobile bases, have become part of our future reality. Let's move on. At CES 2024, Samsung brought many interesting novelties, including a transparent micro LED display and a monitor capable of displaying three-dimensional content without glasses. Transparent micro LED, unlike OLED and LCD screens, is a crystal clear panel capable of transmitting a brighter and clearer picture. All screens are about one centimeter thick, bezel less, and also have an optional tint that covers the background and helps focus on the picture. Journalists who have seen the screens reported that the image is very much like a hologram floating in the air. Samsung also showed a monitor with a three-dimensional screen. It is based on a system for tracking the user's eyes using two cameras installed at the top of the display, which allow the reproduction of 3D graphics even without special glasses. According to the company, the monitor provides the ability to quickly switch between 2D and 3D modes. The three-dimensional effect will be especially interesting to watch in games, allowing the user to immerse themselves in the gameplay fully. And for everyday tasks, a 2D picture is sufficient. 
The Japanese corporation Sony traditionally uses the CS exhibition in Las Vegas to demonstrate its ambitions in the automotive segment, and this year's event was no exception. The joint venture between Sony and Honda, which will supply serial electric vehicles to the market from 2026, at CES 2024 demonstrated an improved version of the Afila concept, which can be controlled remotely using a joystick from the PlayStation 5 game console. Sony Honda Mobility CEO Yasuhide Mizuno, during his speech at CES 2024, used a standard wireless controller from Sony PS5 to bring the improved Afila prototype to the stage, which has been serving as a showcase for Japanese corporation for profile developments for several years. As the speaker explained, this functional feature is included in the prototype only for demonstration purposes and will not necessarily be implemented in the serial cars of this joint venture. Nothing new was said about the technical characteristics and the possible price of the serial embodiment of Afila, but it was previously reported that the car might be equipped with a dual motor electric powertrain with drive to both axles with with a total power of 536 HP, and acceleration to 100 keen dh will take about 4.8 s. It is noteworthy that the maximum speed is declared quite high for a general purpose electric car at the level of 240e keen eh. The presence of 45 different cameras and sensors on board the concept does not mean that all of them will migrate to the serial version, just so Sony can more easily promote its electronic automotive components to the market. It is assumed that serial cars of this JV will begin to be supplied to North America from 2026. The Texas company Shift Robotics introduced an update to the Moonwalkers X robotic footwear to increase mobility in workplaces. In the new version, the weight is significantly reduced, maneuverability and safety are improved, and there is the possibility of adaptation to smaller size footwear. This footwear attaches to boots or sneakers with straps and magnetic fasteners. Now, Moonwalkers X can be adapted for smaller size footwear. This makes them an ideal choice for commercial use in industries where employees actively walk, such as in distribution and logistics, as well as in warehouses and distribution centers. Accelerators help to walk up to 30,000 steps a day without significant fatigue. No changes in speed are reported. The walking speed in the previous version of Moonwalkers increased from the usual 4 to 5 km h to 11 km h. Shift Robotics claims that Moonwalkers have doubled the efficiency of warehouse workers and have already saved nearly 400 hours per year on employee movements in companies where they are already being tested. CEO of Shift Robotics Shunzi Zhang noted that the updated transmission, magnesium alloy frame, and cushioning wheels provide smooth and efficient movement in warehouses. The Shift OS 2.0 control system has built-in improvements in traction control, acceleration, braking, and gate detection for safe movement. Great names are sounding again in the world of technology, and something amazing looms on the horizon. The beginning of this story belongs to OpenAI, a company hotly discussed in September last year, and their cherished plan to create a consumer device that will become an integral part of our lives. For this device to be not just modern, but also natural and intuitive, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman made a wise decision to involve the famous former Apple designer Johnny Ive. According to information from Bloomberg, he was joined by another former Apple employee, Tang Yutan. His current responsibilities are related to product design, but in February 2024, he is ready to move to Johnny Ive's design studio, Love From. What awaits us in this amazing story of joint creativity? Tangtan will be involved in the development of the hardware part of the project, while OpenAI will take care of software development, and Johnny Ive, true to his talent, will create a design that will capture people's hearts. This collaboration means more than just a technical project. It's a search for a new look at a future that has rightfully been called the new device for the AI era, and compared to an iPhone with artificial intelligence. Although the development is still in its early stages, the company Love From is already actively dreaming about the future and looking for new talents to accelerate the process. Masayoshi Son, head of SoftBank, also contributed, investing a whopping $1 billion in this exciting venture. And what would a kick show be without space? The Vulcan Centaur rocket by United Launch Alliance accomplished its much-awaited first launch with a commercial lunar lander. The main payload CERT-1 Peregrine was successfully placed into a high elliptical orbit. As part of the mission, the rocket also carried cremated remains of several people into orbit for Celestis. Peregrine, a lunar lander developed by Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic, carried 20 payloads, including five from NASA, as part of the agency's commercial lunar payload services program. NASA planned to pay $108 million for payload delivery. The spacecraft was scheduled to land on the moon on February 23rd. About seven hours after launch, Astrobotic reported that the spacecraft entered a safe operational state, shortly after deploying from the Centaur upper stage. This included establishing communication with NASA's deep space network and activating its propulsion system. Then, an anomaly occurred, preventing Astrobotic from achieving a stable orientation towards the sun. Astrobotic engineers attempted to send a command to reorient the lander towards the sun. This would have allowed it to receive enough solar radiation 
application to continue operating for an extended period and thus provide more time to resolve the issue. The company managed to reorient the spacecraft towards the sun to charge its battery. However, Astrobotic then reported a critical fuel loss related to the propulsion system failure. As a result, a moon landing became impossible. Peregrine will not only be unable to land on the moon's surface, but is also unlikely to enter lunar orbit. Astrobotic is considering options for alternative missions. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye!